Hello and welcome to the News OK Varsity Podcast. I'm Scott Wright, high school sports writer here at the Oklahoma, and joined by Jacob Unruh, uh, our other high school writer. Jacob, we are uh, we are back in the podcast studio. Time for uh, for some football season. Uh, time for the football season, and uh, and we're gonna get started this uh, this year by debuting our top ten rankings. Um, it's a little bit weird this year with week zero. We've got to fire these things out a little bit earlier than we're than we're used to, uh, but uh, but that's how we're gonna do it. So. Uh, Let's. Uh, what do you say we jump right into it, Jacob? Hey, I'm Ford. Let's get football season underway. All right. Well, uh, what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll debut our top ten. We'll start with Class C and work our way up to six A Division One. Um, as we get uh, get a little bit farther into it, we'll uh, we'll break down some of these teams, what we've seen, what we know about some of them, and uh, and and give you an idea of, uh, of maybe why we uh, we've got them ranked where they are. Uh, but starting with, uh, with with Class C, number ten Covington Douglas, number nine Blue Jacket, number eight Deer Creek Lamont. Number seven is Balco. Number six is Shattuck. After after the, the those six teams, it gets really interesting at the top of Class C. You got Fox, who was an 11 win team last year. Coyle, who I think uh, is a uh, is a, a little bit of a sleeper because they bowed out of the playoffs early. Mm-hmm. Uh, they uh, they went eight and two a year ago. Scored um, a lot of points. They really did. Really talented on offense. They've got Jared Weathers back at quarterback, and uh, and I, I think that uh, that they're a little bit of a sleeper, um, a, a team that could uh, could really sneak up on some people and be a serious contender. Uh, so, so we've got Fox at five, Coyle at four, and then the top three uh, were uh, were almost unanimous when we went through the coaches' uh, contributions to uh, to our poll here. Uh, Tipton at number three, the defending champions. Uh, they've got a lot to replace. Uh, basically, they have one guy back that's uh, uh, that's that's back as a returning starter on both sides of the ball. Terrence rushing, and so uh, fourteen and zero a year ago. Um, but uh, but a lot of new faces on uh, on that ball club. Uh, la- that lands them at number three. The way they've been playing the last few years, you know that uh, that those backups have had plenty of work in some uh, some blowouts and uh, things yeah, like they, that. So. They, well, Depending on if they get past halftime, I guess, right? Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that they've, uh, they've had quite a few. Uh, I, I, I mean, they just about routed everybody they played in the playoffs. In fact, last year, uh, number two, Grandfield, eleven and two last year. This was uh, a little bit of a surprise to me when I started going through uh, the information that some of the coaches sent us because uh, they were good. Uh, mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong, but uh, but they were getting a, a lot of love from the coaches, some first place votes. And uh, and and so that landed them at number two in uh, in our preseason poll and uh, number one Cherokee, which uh, which hasn't lost a, a regular season game since uh, 2011, if uh, if you believe it or not. Cherokee's an interesting place. I was I was born there. Um, a lot of people know that. Uh, I have family there. My dad still lives there. My aunt and uncle. Um, and they're building a new football field. Actually, I don't know if you know that. No. It's that my aunt and uncle live right across the street from it, and they're building a new football field. It's actually. From what they've told me, it's not going to be ready this season, so they're playing their games in Alva, their home games in Alva this season, um, on turf, which they're getting a turf field now too. So um, we might see a little faster Cherokee team on their home games now and uh, and do some real damage. Um, but before we continue um, on to Class B, I wanted to ask you, you brought up something interesting about the coaches part of this. Mm-hmm. Tell us how we come up with these rankings. I mean, you primarily do them, but how, what, what the process is. It's... Uh I mean, it's it, there, there's not a uh, a real strict formula for putting it together. Um, I do weigh the coaches' opinions a lot in in what I do because um, you know, especially in eight man, these guys are seeing these teams more than I am, and they're, if they're going to team camps, things like that mm-hmm. uh, over the summer, or they're more familiar with what they've got coming back, what they lost. Uh, so I rely a lot on on what the coaches have to say, uh, but I don't. It's not strictly a coach's poll. I don't go up and count and count. Okay, mm-hmm. this team got this many first place votes, uh, and that kind of thing. I don't. I, I don't do that. And uh, um, you know, we collaborate a little bit, and I ask you about teams that that you know better than I do, and and we we have a little bit of back and forth to uh, to to figure out exactly you know where we want to put these guys in in the preseason and and. It's like any other preseason poll. It's going to be way off. <laughs> yeah, you know, maybe maybe some are close and maybe some are not, and that's uh, that's how it goes in the preseason. So um, that's just uh, that's just how it is. There are some teams that uh, you know, for for instance, Tipton. You know, with with just the one returning starter, uh, they could be horrible this year. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've got them number three. They they could end up going going five and five and missing the playoffs and. You know that's just uh, that's part of the game. So, um, but yeah, it's uh, it's a subjective uh, subjective process, and um, we take a lot of input from the coaches and uh, and and meld it together with uh, our own opinions, things that we've heard from talking to people, 
and uh, and try to put together the best uh, rankings uh, that we can. Now our, our top ten is coming out right now. It'll be in in the Friday Oklahoman to uh, to coincide with the first games mm-hmm. of uh, of week zero, first regular season games of the season. Our full class rankings, uh, one through however many is in that class, uh, will be in our special section that comes out on September second. That's a Wednesday. Um, and so that'll uh, that will have all of that in there and with uh, with be the be sure uh, to pick up your copy of the Oklahoma that day. It's exactly. going to be excellent. Exactly. So uh, a lot of work going into into that beyond uh, beyond just the rankings and uh, and class breakdowns and everything. So um, you'll want to check that out as well. So um, so yeah. So that's Class C. Uh, let's uh, move on to the other eight man class, Class B, really quickly. Uh, number ten is Walika. Number nine is Turpin. Number eight Kyoto. Number seven Maysville. Number six Sealing. And again, in Class B, just like in Class C, I think the top five is really interesting because I think there's a lot of really good teams. Now, when we get to number one, um, I'll tell you, I, I don't know if there's anybody that's going to challenge those guys this year. Uh, but two through five, I think, are some really good teams. We could have some really good playoff games in uh, once once we get to November. Um, but, uh, but number five, Pond Creek Hunter, a 10-win team a year ago. Uh, they've really bounced back. They had, they had kind of fallen on some hard times for a while. Uh, but they've they bounced back and been consistently good in a lot of sports. Really, their basketball team, uh, boys and girls, have been making runs at uh, at at the state tournament. Uh, the football team is uh, is really good again. Number four, Laverne. They've got a coaching change up there with Tim Allen uh, out of the way up there. He's he's decided to uh, to move on and um, not coach at all now. Um, but uh, that's a big change there. Yeah, it is. It's it's big. Um, but uh, I mean, a 12 and one team a year ago. They're, they've still got some talent uh, there at Laverne, and uh, I think that they're that they're a top five team for sure. Uh, number three, Dewar, another 12 and one team. And you move to number two, Davenport, also 12 and one. Um, I think that uh, if if anybody has a chance out of that group to to really really challenge the number one team. I think that Davenport has the best shot. Uh, they've got a lot of experience. Hunter Reed has been that quarter, the quarterback mm-hmm. there for a long time. John Greenfield is a coach that uh, that I covered way back in the day when I was working in Shawnee uh, there at Davenport, and uh, and he's a he's a very good football coach, particularly at the eight man ranks. Um, really understands the game well and uh, and and gets those guys in the right situations. All right, it's uh, from time to time on this podcast. We come to a point where we have to determine how to pronounce the name of a town, <laughs> and we've reached our first one here at uh, we, at number one. We determined in, Sky Tuke last year. So. Uh, no, no, we it, we debated whether or not it was Sky Tuke or Sky Took. It's Sky Tuke. <laughs> uh, we we never determined anything as uh, as far as I remember. But uh, um, we, we have a couple of these along the way here today, and then we're going to get to our first one. You've got uh, you've got the rankings there in front of you. Um, what does the number one slot on your Class B rankings say? Doesn't it say Alec? Uh, no, it does not. It says Alec. Alec, huh? Okay. It does not That's, say Alex, I, which is a lot. What right, a lot of people yeah. will tell I, you. I, I'm not going to pretend that I know the right yeah. answer to this one. No, I. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I tend to believe that I'm saying it right. I, I, that's, that's how I've been told mm-hmm. for a long time. Uh, I've got some uh, uh, some close people that I know uh, that are in that area. And uh, that's how I've always been told that it's, it's, uh, that it's pronounced. Like, I, can, I can change that. I just have a hard time not pronouncing that A, the X. Yeah. I can get around and and do that. But mentally, I think the A is hard for me to yeah. let go of. So hopefully we're saying the name of their town the way that uh, that their Chamber of Commerce would like it to be said. Feel but, free to uh, tweet us, pronunciation, um, email yeah, us. We'll exactly. take it. We'll learn it. We'll learn on the fly. But anyway, uh, I, I, I I don't know that anybody can really challenge them in this class. I, they're ridiculously good. They've got a, a big quarterback, Kyler Thornburg, at running back, who who led the state all classes uh, in in yards, rushed for 3,200 yards last year. Um, just a uh, ridiculously talented team. They've got some size up front. Um, these guys are really good, and uh, I just I don't know that anybody can keep up with them. I I wouldn't put any hope. I mean. I would put some hope, obviously, some teams. I think Davenport, like you said, is a team, and I'll, uh, Laverne has had such success lately. I wouldn't count them out um, this early, but Ellick is, <laughs> uh, like you said, is just loaded. And when when a guy puts up those kind of numbers at a running back position, even an eight man football, it jumps out at you. And I think if he duplicates that or does better, that there's no way that anyone touches him. All right, moving on to Class A. 
We've got number 10, Apache. Number 9 is Morrison. Number 8 is Kiefer. Number 7, Ringling. Number 6, Hollis. Now, this is, uh, this is one of the more wide-open classes, I really think, right now, just looking at it on paper at this point in the season here in, uh, in you know, late August. It's uh, a lot to be determined between now and then, but uh, I think this is one of the more wide-open classes. Uh, number 5, Tallahina, a team that has to replace their quarterback. Uh, number four, Winnie Wood, a team that uh, that I think has a lot of talent that they're building around. Some young guys like Baron Odom, who's really coming on strong. Uh, I think that they've got a chance to be really good. Number three is Cashin, made the finals last year. They lost uh, they lost some pieces around quarterback Matt Harmon, who's just going to be a junior, but it's his third year as a starter. Uh, one of the uh, one of the better junior quarterbacks I think in the state. He's he's really good. Um, and just spoiler for everyone on our Wednesday on our September 2nd section, our class A preview is revolved around Matt Harmon and, and Cashin and, um, and his development. And he is, um, he's a special quarterback there out of a, out of a line of special quarterbacks from Cashin. Yeah, he, he really is. We'll see what, uh, what they're able to put around him. Um, they, uh, they had some pretty talented seniors on that team last year. So, uh, going to be fun to watch them. Number two, Stratford, uh, another team that, uh, that I was surprised to see getting, uh, as much pub from coaches as they were. But definitely, uh, definitely a talented ball club, um, and uh, and number one, the defending champion Thomas. Uh, they lost some uh, some some big pieces from last mm-hmm. year, but uh, coaches still think they were going to be really good this year. Um, they they do have some talent back, but uh, uh, when you look at uh, at particularly at coaches' opinions of of these teams, they think that, uh, that that Thomas is right back where they're at. Yeah, and it's interesting because I think they graduated a lot of their offensive line, from what I remember. They um, did. They lost. Uh, they lost a lot of size in particular. Yeah, and they were they were huge because I, I watched them uh, against Cash in that title game last year, and they were just so much bigger than Cash all the way around. Um, and they got to Harmon early and rattled him, and and it just snowballed on Cash from there. And you then they lost their quarterback. Uh, they lost Cheston Nice at receiver, who had a big <laughs> game. Um, it's interesting that coaches still think that highly of them, which not to say they shouldn't. It just um, it's it's really intriguing when the state championship team that went undefeated loses that much talent. Coaches still want to put them at the top. Exactly. Let's move on to class two uh, A now. Number ten. I, I'll be honest. Uh, putting putting this this top ten together was tough because there are a lot of really good teams in in class two A. I think. Uh, but number ten, we've got Christian Heritage, a team with a uh, a young talented quarterback who I got to see the other night, and a good running back in Joseph Lemieux. Uh, number nine is Stroud. Number eight. Oh, 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 pronounce it. Number eight. Number eight. I just say Hartshorn. Hartshorn. Yeah. All right. I've I've, I've I've I'll take your word for it. I've always said Hartshorn. But uh, I'm I'm good with either way. So I, yeah, I I don't pretend to know the answer to that one either. I listen. I, we'll, we'll take I, tweets and emails with pronunciations on these towns from people. Exactly. It's always fun. Uh, number seven, Nawada. Number six, Oklahoma Christian. The top six teams in uh, in this poll almost were were mentioned in almost every top ten that a coach submitted to us uh, this season. Now, now Davis was was in every single one. Uh, <laughs> but we'll get to them in a second. But um, but. Number six through number two were were almost identical in the the number of mm-hmm. of uh, of times they were mentioned in the top ten. Um, but uh, number six OCS, and number five Hennessy, number four Washington, number three Millwood. Who um, you know, like I said, we we take our own opinions. It's not just strictly a coach's mm-hmm. poll. I think that uh, that if we had gone strictly off a coach's poll, Millwood probably would have found fell right around the sixth spot. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, having been out and seen Millwood a couple of times in the preseason, I think they're going to be really good, which uh, which has earned them the number three spot. Uh, number two, Adair with B.J. Bradbury back at quarterback. Hard to ar- argue with that. And, uh, and number one, the Davis Wolves. 30 straight wins. Um, you know, you can talk about players that they've lost, um, you know, whether it's Blake Summers or whoever. Um, they still just run the wishbone and and beat you up at the line of scrimmage and do what they do better than you do what you do. Yeah, and they're going to get um, tested early. They got Tuttle on Friday yeah. for zero week, and uh, it's, uh, it's it's that's intriguing to me just because you say they lost Blake Summers. They lost a lot of people. Um, but that system, they grow up in that system around town. Everyone runs it. They teach it. They know how to do it. Um, they like to play football. They like to play Smash Mouth football. And so it's, um, you know, there's there's no doubt they're the number one team until someone beats them. Otherwise, in 2A, I would say, um, if they lose to Tuttle, then, you know, that's fine. Uh, but I think the, the most interesting of the top six is OCS going down to six. Um, 
you know, they they lost a lot of talent off last season's team. Um, they returned Thomas Qualls at quarterback. That's essentially pretty close to what they have back on offense. Um, but Qualls is good, and OCS and Coach Derek Turner have put a really good program together there and a really good system, and I have no doubt that they're going to be a challenging team. Um, so I'll be curious to see if they're going to rise in this poll or, or fall as the season goes on. Yeah, like I said, a lot of a uh, lot of respect from opposing coaches among those teams in the uh, in the top six. Uh, Davis was was number one in literally almost every poll that was submitted to us by a coach. There was only a couple; they weren't voted num- lower than three in any of them, and only about three polls had them uh, somewhere other than number one. I'm so. kind of I'm kind of shocked that there were that many that didn't vote him number one. To be honest, yeah. I mean, I just think two A is like, oh, it's Davis. Yeah, exactly. So, and uh, and like you said, we get to get a, an up close look at them uh, on Friday mm-hmm. night in in uh, in zero week with with their trip to Tuttle. So, um, so that's a that, right, that game right there is uh, is the number one reason why I'm excited about mm-hmm. zero week existing as a as a rule because it's going to open the door for some really interesting games to uh, to get the season kicked off. Moving on to number uh, to class three A, we start with a team that's uh, that's also playing an interesting. Uh, Week zero game Bethany they host Lone Grove. Now um, uh, I've got Ida, uh, Bethany at ten, Ida Bell at nine, Lone Grove at eight. Uh, I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be completely transparent here. I've got Lone Grove ranked two spots ahead of Bethany. In Friday's paper, I'm picking Bethany to win this game, and it has a lot to do with the travel. Uh, week mm-hmm. one is, or week zero, you know, opening week. Um, I think that um, you know playing in the comfort of your own home is uh, is going to be a big difference in this game. Uh, I love Lone Grove. I think ultimately that they're going to be the better team, um, but not by much. I think that this is a, it's a really close um, back and forth uh, between these two teams. But uh, but with the travel, I like I like I like Bethany in uh, in this ball game uh, just because of uh, of all the strangeness of of the opening week. So. Anyway, so it's going to look really weird in Friday's paper when you look up and see Lone Grove 8, Bethany 10, and then uh, <laughs> in the rankings, and then you look right below it, and you see that Bethany's picked to win. For uh, some reason, I thought that was going to be the score for a second. Uh, well, and maybe maybe thought, that, wow. that I might pick it. I might pick <laughs> Bethany 10 to Lone Grove 8. I don't know. Um, but Idabel 9, Lone Grove 8, Kingfisher 7. Um, I, I don't think that they're going to stay there for long, but I think that they'll be back there before the season is over. Mm-hmm. Um, they've got a lot of work left to do, a lot of, a lot of new guys. Um, you know, I mean, for a, a 3A team, they graduated uh, two guys who went to play Division One football, six more guys who went to play Division Two football. That's uh, that's a lot of talent to take away from a, from a Class 3A team. Um, I saw them in their uh, their scrimmage at Cassidy last week. They've got some talent. They're uh, they're a, a little ways away, but by the end of the year, I think we'll be talking about them as a top 10 team again. Number six, Victory Christian. Number five, Lincoln Christian. Two teams with outstanding quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. Um, 3A is so loaded at quarterback. It was it it's, was hard to even get them yeah, all on on the not fair. all the all the deserving ones on the uh, the preseason all state team. Number four, John Marshall, um, a team that uh, I really considered ranking higher than uh, than this, um, but I want to see them do some things on the field. Um, I, I think I think they've got as much or more talent uh, than anybody in the class. Um, obviously, they're getting they're getting the uh, the recruiting attention more so than uh, than anybody else in the class. Uh, but you got to put it all together on uh, on Friday nights and go and go win football games, and uh, and they they did that a lot last year. But there's a few more that they uh, that they needed to uh, to pull that off against, and one of those being number three on this poll, Douglas. Uh, mm-hmm. That was uh, it was a one point game last year, and uh, and Douglas came out on top. I think I think experience helped. Um, you know, John Marshall was battling some injuries at that point, but. Um, those are the games that John Marshall is going to need to go win this year to uh, to prove that they uh, that they are one of the elite teams in this class, and uh, I don't think there's much surprise in uh, in the top two. Number two, Locust Grove. Number one, Heritage Hall. Yeah, I think I think it's good that we go with Heritage Hall right off the bat. Um, really, their big replacement is placing the quarterback at Connor McGinnis, um, but they still have Terrell Love, Tevin McDaniel, Luther Harris, um, guys like that back that that are huge huge pieces of last year's title run team. Um, the question is now is that you know Connor was such a big part also in defense uh, against a team like Locust Grove in the secondary. The question now is if they do place face Locust Grove again in the playoffs, how do they slow down Jason Pertle and Mason Fine? And then it's not that they did it the first time; 
<laughs> they right. Just, exactly. You know, I mean, they still threw. He still threw for 500 yards, but yeah. um, it's uh, it, that's going to be an interesting matchup. And they actually scrimmage this week. Um, yeah. Or they're in the same scrimmage. I'm not sure if they'll face each other or not. I guess, but uh, that's um, that's about the best one two that you can have, uh, small school wise right now. Um, and Mason Fine, I think, is probably prime for even bigger year. Yeah, uh, the way he's developed and, and is focused, and Matt Hennessy has him focused, and um, Locust Grove is a team that I would wouldn't be surprised if if they got over that hump this year. Yeah, absolutely, and obviously he and uh, Keats Calhoun at Victory Christian are both uh, less than uh, twenty three hundred yards away from the uh, the state's all time passing yardage mark. So uh, that'll be fun to watch as well. We'll see how that uh, how that uh, breaks down from here on out. Class four A. Uh, number 10, Tuttle, who we talked about hosting Davis uh, on Friday night. Number 9, Elk City, a team that's been getting a lot of pub from coaches. Coaches are in love with what this team is doing uh, right now and uh, earned them a spot in the top 10. Number 8, Poto. Number 7, Ada, which has Wade Stanley as, as its new head coach uh, after he left Norman North. Number 6, Fort Gibson. Number 5, Metro Christian. Number 4, Hera, who is our uh, our featured team in mm-hmm. our uh, in our uh, preseason preview that comes out on uh, uh, next Wednesday, September second. Number three, Anna Darko, and then uh, and then the two teams uh, from the title game: number two, Ulaga; number one, Wagner, the defending champion. Right back, uh, right back where they were. Yeah, when I was when I was looking through Wagner's information sheet of what they have coming back that they sent us and everything, they're loaded again. They are. They they just I don't know if they even graduated anyone last year. It, it doesn't like. it doesn't feel like it's it. like every key player is back and and that's really scary for four A because. They they turned out to be a really good team. Um, they uh, Ulaga's still be really good though with with um, with all the talent they have back yeah, uh, got to Spain McKinney and, at, and at McKinney linebacker. At linebacker. Yeah, and uh, you know Anna Darko is an interesting team. They graduated a lot of that talent last year. It was supposed to be here that they want that they were going to just roll through four A and injuries kind of derailed that. And they graduated a lot of that talent. They've got a new quarterback who's not a natural quarterback. They've got a lot of different guys up front, uh, different things. It's going to be an intriguing team to see. That's going to. This is going to be the test to see if their system is really working the way it has the last few years with the the kind of talent they've had rolling through there. But and you mentioned Hera. Hera is um, interesting case. They're not going to throw it. They're not going to beat you through the air. But they're going to use Logan Roberson, who's committed OU up front to lead for Grant Martin, who led the state in rushing last year, uh, eleven man wise, and is going to be. Um, equally as good probably yeah, led all classes in yards per game actually with about uh, i think it was 235 236 uh per game in uh, in what, 11 games that they played pretty impressive season for him class 5a very uh very difficult to rank the top 10 uh in this in this class because there's there's a lot of talent there's a lot of borderline um maybe these guys are going to be good uh or they could just fall on their face mm-hmm. type of teams um, but but really tough to rank, and uh, so we'll jump in at number ten with McGinnis, uh, a team that I got to see in a scrimmage last week that I think has a lot of talent. Um, they've they've got a young offensive line if that th- that comes together with a couple of talented running backs behind them. Uh, I think they've got a chance to be really good. Uh, Altus had uh, Taven Burdo move back in after uh, after leaving for his junior year, returns as a senior. They're really excited about that, by the way. They 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 are pumped up down in Altus. Mm-hmm. Not not just about Birdo, but about this football program in general. Mm-hmm. Uh, they feel like Jeremy Reed's got this going in the right direction, and uh, and they, and they think that uh, big things are on the horizon uh, for that team. Uh, unfortunately, they're uh, like McGinnis in a really tough district. Yeah. Um, number eight, McAllister. Uh, that's one of the teams that I really don't know what direction this program is going to go. Uh, you you lose Dalton Wood at quarterback. You lose uh, you lose Coach Pratt. Um, just, uh, I mean, it's obviously a, a sound program that they built. You would expect to, to be able to continue, mm-hmm. but you just you just never know when a team goes through that much change, that much turnover in one off season. It could uh, it could be really messy if uh, if things don't work out. Number seven, Carl Albert. Um, uh, they're Carl Albert. Yeah, I mean, it's. I, think, I saw them last week. They got a long ways to go. Yeah, um, I I think I think coaches uh, when five A coaches start filling out their top ten. The pin just automatically writes Carl Albert yeah. in there somewhere for them because it, because of Gary Rose and and the talent that they've got. Yeah, they've got talent, and like I said, they've got a long ways to go. Um, they really impressed me in that playoff game against Lawton Mac mm-hmm. in the first round last season. They almost came back from a two or three touchdown deficit and won, but they uh, 
Um, so they return a lot of that talent. They just, Gary Rose will admit to it. They've got a long ways to go. They're, they'll they'll probably be a team that might fall out of this poll yeah. briefly, but they'll be in there by the end of the year. Uh, number six, Collinsville. Number five, Ardmore, another team that uh, people are just raving about right now. Mm-hmm. They, they got a few first-place votes from coaches. So we'll see what uh, what happens with with them. Number four, Guthrie, and number three, Deer Creek. Um, uh, you know, I could go back and forth on the, on those guys all day long, and and never really make up my mind which one I think is going to be better. Um, I, I ultimately went with uh, with Deer Creek because I feel like they've got um, more talent returning in important places mm-hmm. uh, than uh, than than Guthrie, but I think they're both going to be really good. Um, and and when you look at it, there we've got the top four teams from that district: Deer Creek, Guthrie. Carl Albert and McGinnis all in our top ten. Um, that leaves that uh, brings us to number two, Dell City. Um, they were a team that, uh, from a coach's perspective, was all over the all over the map. There were teams that didn't even have them. Coaches didn't ha- even have them in their top ten. Uh, they got some first place votes. They were just uh, just all over the place. But I uh, I think with uh, with Terry Wilson, uh, Walter Watts, and some of the other uh, the leadership that they've got back, the attitude that they've got this year is different from a typical Dell City team and I think that that's going to make a big difference for them and uh and the number one team uh in our poll is uh the defending champion Lawton MacArthur yeah they're and they're interesting number one um and you saw them last week but yeah. they return was it one starter uh, yeah one uh I think one offensive two defensive basically yeah that's it. um you know they got a move in at quarterback uh all these different pieces that are just just gone and I think there was even some turnover on the coaching staff Ernie Manning I think has uh, finally hung it up uh, after helping Brett his son coach and um, a couple other people I think left too they finally got that gold ball so I think it's going to be an interesting uh, study to see <laughs> what yeah. a lot of Mac's going to do this year yeah, uh, absolutely. You know, they've got that system in place they run the pure spread they do the jet sweeps they do the they do all kinds of stuff, and that gets the ball out in space for their athletes because they always have athletes. Right. And it's going to be um, interesting to see what they do with all these new faces. Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, I saw, I saw them in that scrimmage at McGinnis, and, I mean, it, they are a scary-looking team when they walk onto the field because of the size, uh, the, uh, the athletic-looking kids that they've got. It's just a question of putting it all together. Mm-hmm. Uh, with so many new starters, so much inexperience, it's really tough to 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 make that all come together the way that you want it to. And so it could be a tough year. It could be uh, you know that everything goes smoothly and uh, and they're right back at the uh, at the top of five A. I tell you what, Anthony Love, their uh, their junior quarterback, looks the part, and and I mean he can run, he can throw six three one eighty five, moves well, very smooth in uh, in everything that he does so we'll see if uh you know they've got the intangibles to 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 put that all together and and make another run after uh, after finally breaking through and winning a class 5a title 6a2 um which uh in a i was gonna say in a friendly way but it's not in a friendly way been referred to <laughs> as the the jv title uh <laughs> yeah for, for 6a nothing friendly it's about not that, not friendly at all um I've but that. <laughs> uh um but we're here for year two of uh, of class six six A division two. Uh, could be a very interesting year. I think um, you got uh, Sand Springs at number ten, Muskogee at number nine, uh, number eight Lawton Eisenhower, number seven Bartlesville, which was a team that I probably ranked higher than a lot of uh, a lot of coaches were talking about. But they've got some really talented players there if they can uh, if they can uh, mesh and uh, and and you know cover up cover up the holes that they've got. I think that uh, that they have a chance to be a really good team this year. Number six, Choctaw, which has to replace Jonah Lanusa at quarterback, but uh, but I think I think they'll look a lot different. But I think that they're pretty talented. Number five, Stillwater. Uh, number four, Lawton. Number three, Tulsa Washington. Number two, Midwest City, and number one, Bixby, the defending champion. It's uh, I really think that um, the top four for sure, and maybe the top seven can go in a lot of different in a lot of different uh places you can shake that thing up and uh, and really change it around a lot um i i it's hard hard to predict what's going to happen in this class this year yeah stillwater jumps out at me at five um yep. you know they're looking for a quarterback going this preseason they've got jordan brown at receiver who's probably i'd say maybe the top receiver in the state yeah. um he's 
phenomenal athlete, and they're going to do a lot of stuff with him besides just a receiver. Um, so that, depending on their quarterback situation and a few other things, they could they could be a team that you know could go down, could go up in this poll. Um, Lawton's the same way. Lawton's a lot of different faces. They graduated a ton of Division One talent, Division yeah. Two talent, like you talked about with Kingfisher. They had I don't remember how many kids at signing day. I was there. It was it was the biggest signing day I had been to. It was yeah. just a lot of kids signing to play football somewhere. You know, Tulsa, Washington is a team that's always dangerous. Midwest City's still loaded. Um, Bixby's got Nick Roller back, which is huge. Um, yeah. He's he was uh, had a monster season last year at running back, and and he makes six A running back choices hard. No, oh, yeah, um, because you know you got Darren Williams and and guys like that and six A one that are just phenomenal running backs too, and and, and here he is too, and and uh, it's. I I'm really interested to see what six A two was. I think I had someone ask me a couple of weeks ago what I thought about six A two, and and I don't know what to think about it sometimes because, like I said, any of those I think any of those four teams have a mm-hmm. legitimate shot to win in this title. Yeah, uh, those top four, and so it's hard for me to just say uh, Bixby's going to repeat. I mean, you, you just don't right. know at this no. point what what's going to happen in this in this no. uh, in this class. And and you look at last year, it was Midwest City, Tulsa, Washington, and Lawton that we were all talking about where were heads and shoulders above everybody else in in the mm-hmm. class and Bixby comes through and, and pulls out the title so so who knows it's it's really gonna be interesting all right we'll uh we'll cap it off with 6a division one um let's uh let's let's skip the non-dramatic part jinx and union are one and yeah, two say do we really need to talk about one and two so let's um, uh let's uh, let's count it down from 10 to 3 there we go all and right. uh, and actually have a little bit of drama left with uh with the, the this podcast here um and well, this was another one that was that was really tough between seven and twelve in uh, in six A one. There's uh, there are a lot of teams that I think are 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 playoff caliber teams. But number ten UConn, number nine Edmund Memorial, number eight Edmund Santa Fe, number seven Norman North, number six Southmore, which is uh, the team that's uh, as far as these rankings go, that's banking a little bit more on potential than mm-hmm. uh, than other teams. Yeah, they're they've got so much young talent coming up that's uh, that's that's growing and developing, but they've got but they've got some seniors that are uh, that are pretty solid. Uh, Darian Moss, Dunye Rice, guys that are are big time playmakers. Noah Jones on defense, obviously a Texas Tech mm-hmm. commit, one of the top ten prospects in the state. Um, so that's uh, that's what's earned them the uh, the the number six ranking and also the um, number two West Side ranking. <laughs> um, number five Owasso, number four Broken Arrow. Broken Arrow could be uh, could be the team that uh, that steps up and challenges Jinxer Union this year. It's t- it's tough to say what uh, what they're going to do, and that leaves. Uh, Leaves us at number three with Mustang, who um, a lot of coaches argue that that Broken Arrow brings back more talent than uh, than Mustang does this year. Um, but Mustang proved it on Broken Arrow's home field last year that uh, that they could go win mm-hmm. uh, up there. And and when you've got Chandler Garrett back, they've got some some talent around him. That even though they're inexperienced, uh, they're uh, they're really talented. I think the defense is going to be better this year. Um, and and that was uh, that was their downfall at, at times last year. So I think that uh, I think that they're going to make uh, another big step forward. And um, are they ready to challenge Jinx and Union? I I don't know. I think they might still be a couple of years away if uh, if Jeremy Dombeck continues to build this program the way that that he has begun to uh, over these first three seasons uh, or two so far and going into his third. I think that they can be a program that that makes that challenge, but I don't know that they're there right now. Yeah, it's. I mean, we can't obviously can't say anyone's going to challenge them yet because no one has. Right. But um, I like what I've seen from Mustang, the way they're building things. Don Beck knows what he's doing with quarterbacks. Chandler Garrett, I think, is the advantage over Broken Arrow. Um, I don't think Broken Arrow has a quarterback that matches Chandler Garrett's abilities. Yeah. Now and and I'll pick the quarterback in that situation. Um, you know, Southmore's team you mentioned a lot of time. I saw them last week in a scrimmage. They're loaded. Yeah. You know, they just have speed. They have size. Uh, they have Bray Walker, who's sophomore, who's already got multiple Division One offers. Ridiculous at, at tackle. Offers. Yeah, yeah, and not just you know small Division Ones, OSU big schools. And, yeah. And uh, Michigan came in and offered him. Uh, yeah. Which is phenomenal. It's, it's bizarre and or not bizarre. It's wild. Yeah. And he's. He's massive. It's the first time I'd seen him in person. Just a huge, huge kid. Um, 
And then on the other side of the line, they've got Wyatt Whitmarsh, a six foot seven Who's, senior. He looks just as big. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you look at that line and you think you're going up against a mm-hmm. a, a college line. I mean, Whitmarsh is a is a low level D one prospect right now. He's a Central Arkansas offer, um, but he's uh, I mean he's a really big dude and he can really make some noise at this level. Yeah, they they've got that line that I think could challenge a a Jinx or a union line yeah. um, if they got in that situation. It's just like I said, putting it together. They have so much talent, but they're so young. Might be a little inconsistent. Norman North really impressed me at the scrimmage last week. Um, you know, the Stoops brothers, I've talked about them. Uh, they had a good showing. But uh, they just they had big plays all over the field for Norman North, no matter who was a quarterback, no matter who was the receiver on defense. They just played with a lot of um, energy that – that you don't see in scrimmages a lot, and they really, they really shined. And I was, they're a team that I think could climb up in this poll. Absolutely, I think uh, you know you got Quan Hogan, you got that big offensive line. Uh, that's most of those guys are are going into their third year as starters. Um, so I definitely think that the uh, that the potential is there uh, with Norman North, which is why that I, I have them at, at number seven, uh, despite the you know the rough year that they had last year, falling off at the end, missing the playoffs. You know they're going to look a lot different because they don't have a Division One built quarterback. Mm-hmm. You know they don't have David Cornwell. They don't have John Kolar. They're going to have a, a smaller guy back there, but a guy that uh, that can throw it around, run a little bit, do some different things. So and throw to Charlie Kolar, who exactly. is huge. He is. He is, and uh, he's fun to watch. And um, he's he's a great kid. When I've talked to him, uh, mm-hmm. one of my favorite kids to uh, to to interview last year. Out of uh, all the kids that uh, that that I talked to for the first time, not knowing what you're going to get with a, a then a sophomore, uh, he was uh, he was just a blast to talk to and uh, and is a really good kid. So so there it is. That's our uh, that's our top ten preseason for uh, for the 2015 season. Like I said, it gets started with a few games on Friday in uh, in week zero, and then uh, and then week one we fire it all up for real, and uh, everybody out on the field and 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 ready to go. So. Um, We'll uh, we'll try to keep this podcast as regular as uh, as we can during uh, during the season, um, but uh, but be sure to check out our our preseason section that comes out on September second in the in the uh, with the, along with the sports page of September second we'll have uh, our statewide breakdown of uh, of all the classes all the teams as much as we can. We'll, so we'll rank every team. That's right. You'll find out exactly how uh, good or bad your town is. Uh, your town's team is going to be this year, or at least what we think right now and we'll change next week and feel free to holler at us on that too we'll we'll take it that's right (laughs) all right jacob that's going to do it i'm scott wright he's jacob unruh thanks for joining us on the news okay varsity podcast and we will talk to you next time